Hey guys, Phoenix and Regal here from the Part-Time Nerd, bringing you those builds we promised you. So actually, you'll notice that Regal's got the camera this time. He's using XSplit, and he's going to go through. Uh, Regal, who are you doing today? Uh, my first off, we're going to be doing the Necromancer, then we'll move on to the Warrior. Awesome. We're doing your two mains, eh? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Just for today, we'll, we'll get to the other characters as we go. You'll, you'll see them in our dungeons, and you'll probably say, hey, what's it look like? What's it do? Anyway, awesome. so yeah, we're going to jump right into this, and we're going to start off with just the focus of my build and its armor. Now... I'm going to highlight up here. Yeah, so my armor is carry-on armor. It's got power, vitality, condition damage, as well as the runes itself are also condition and vitality based, except for the final ability, which is plus 20% fear duration. Necromancers do a lot of fearing. Fear is good. <laughs> so you're like middling away at them. Uh, absolutely. This is, this is about outlasting your opponent in most cases. And as we go over to the... Um, See, not so easy, is it? Ah. Oh, no, no, I, had, I, I, I never said it was easy. This is some difficult <laughs> stuff here. Yeah, we're over into the accessories, and again, it's all carry-on based. There's a little bit of precision in there, just because I have no choice from Ascended Gear. This was the best one for condition damage. And, of course, the back brace is a power toughness vit. Again, there's no condition-based one. So when we look they're at these stats... huh? They're working on that. I keep watching the forums. Hopefully they add them soon, because I know a lot of players are having that trouble right now. Oh yeah, so if you notice that down at the bottom here, I've got tons of health, close to 30,000. Now that's Jesus. one health pool. Then I've also got the Death Shroud, which adds another health pool, and that one's recurring. You can keep gaining that one back during the fight, which is awesome. You just outlive your opponent so well with this. We're going to take it over to the weapons now, and I've got a Scepter and a Dagger that I use mostly, and then on the offhand I have uh, a Staff, the Quarter Staff. Quarter staff of force is what mine's called, so I'm like, ooh, I gotta. You say gotta that. get a look at it. You're like, Shoot, what yeah, is it? it's so cool because I got these sweet ass jade skins. That was yeah, a great event. That was an awesome event. So anyway, the, the, losing the, focus. <laughs> <laughs> losing the full the full purpose of 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 the scepter, obviously, is if I highlight this ability, the very first one, it's all conditions. Every single thing does a condition for five, ten seconds, and it just constantly stacks it. So even if people are removing them from you. Or, or a boss like purges them or something, you're able to apply them again and again and again and again. So outlasting while doing a significant amount of damage. Going up up the row, we've got a little bit of uh, area of control. We've got Grasping of the Dead, gives you some cripple. Even further up, you're punishing your opponent for having conditions. And even further up, we got a little bit more control from the dagger. We've got some, uh, some weakness so that those people that really do try to beat down and critical you to death can't do that just because you are reducing their ability to do so. Switching over to the staff, the whole reason is obvious, again, for why we'd use the staff. It's got a huge amount of range. You're in World vs. World and you want to shoot up from a tower all the way down to your enemies, this is the one to do it. Now, it's a slow attack. It moves really slowly. But that's what all of the AoE uh, targeting attacks are for the rest of the staff. They're all... Regal, we, we just lost some of our audience. A golem just walked away. It didn't want to listen to us anymore. <laughs> that golem just walked on past. Oh, so man. That, that, I, I'll just summon one. That'll, that'll take care of this. Okay, perfect. Just summon, summon the golem for us. <laughs> we have an audience. I, I feel bad. The golem's gone. Um, well, well, here. I got a fleshy one. Do you do the same thing that uh, you recommended to me, though? Do you carry, like, all the weapons, though, for your, for your class, just in case there's an off chance you want to use a different weapon that your class has unlocked? I have one weapon that works well with the build called the Focus as an, as an alternate choice, and yes, that does work well. But unfortunately for us, and it's not really a bad thing, but there's a completely different build for the Axe. So while I do have one in my inventory here, it actually has no benefit to this build. Okay, cool, cool. We're going to go on to the, the traits and skills next. We'll do some traits first. Oh, okay. Get all the stats stuff taken care of. I just want to say your, your, your golem is uh, actually very highly zoomed in on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, our viewers can't even see our golem. I got this huge menu that they're looking at right now. I can see him. He is nasty. Anyways, go <laughs> on. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So up at the top here in my traits line, I take spite, the power line. But it's not actually for the power that I'm taking this line. It's actually for that condition duration, the second portion of it. Because as we know, if we're going to be staying alive for a long period of time, we want to make sure that our conditions are also being applied for that long period of time. I usually combine this with, uh, I don't know, you know about the pizza, Rob? That that plus 40% duration? The, the pizza? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's actually a couple things for it. I'm going to open up my, my inventory, something that I don't think you ever are allowed to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, because if I do, I'll do it every... Oh, you're talking about the, the foods, right? Yeah, the foods. Yeah, I got something called the kawaii that. cakes that I use, and it adds 40% condition duration. It's very valuable, especially along with this 30% boost from the trait line. 
So I way up at the two watch watch talk. Bam, have some. I use them. They're awesome. <laughs> That's definitely going to be a teach noob, guys. So we will be doing teach noob based on foods because foods are a wicked way to sort of boost your stats and help you out in combat. Definitely. For sure, for sure. So anyway, we're doing all this damage. So we went all the way through the, the power line here, way up at the top. When enemies are below 50% health, which they'll be for a while, especially if you're up against a boss, you get an additional 20% damage. Moving further down, minion damage is increased by 30%. If you notice, my bar's got a whole bunch of minions. We'll add some value to that. Uh, and we'll talk more, more about the skills as we get further down, or further into the video here. Uh, and way at the bottom here, we have Life Blast grants might for 15 seconds. Now, Life Blast is a really slow attack. It comes from your, your Death Shroud. But you can get two, three, even four stacks. And again, we're not looking for that power. We're looking for that condition damage. Now, we're going to skip Curses, because this line boggles my mind and we're gonna go over to death magic <laughs> at least you're honest about it yeah it, it just one, no. just just no <laughs> someone finds a good bill for it post it tell me about it and i'll make it i'll try and make it work <laughs> anyway we're over in death magic i've got toughness and boon duration from this one now my bill doesn't benefit from boon duration itself i can't apply so many boons myself but if you're in a team environment an extra 30 percent doesn't hurt What's really good though is the increased toughness, and that's because again, we're trying to outlast survive. We got nearly 30,000 health. This toughness really helps. Moving up the line, we have gained 400 toughness while channeling. Well, guess what? Every single staff ability is a channel, except for its auto attack. That means you almost always have, when you need it, that extra 400 toughness, putting us over 2,000, which I, I just think is incredible. That's awesome, actually. Oh yeah, going further almost. up the almost as much as my pets dude almost, <laughs> almost as much as your pet yes <laughs> <Almost> as <much laughs> as <H. laughs> yes that's true but i get to decide when i want that toughness yeah, fair enough. <laughs> i don't get it myself don't worry i have nowhere near that much yeah so we're gonna go a little bit further up minions have 50 percent more health yeah they are gonna die they're disposable unlike uh phoenix's pet but we want to make sure that that 30 percent more damage is being put to use and way up at the top of the line, when they do eventually die, they explode into a cloud of poison. Gives you a nice big AoE field, lasts for about 3 seconds, and again we're putting more condition damage onto our opponent. Now, that's 60 points, we got 10 more points to go, where do they go? Well, I've actually split it into the last two lines, Blood Magic and Soul Reaping, just for those little minor uh, abilities that they give. The, f the first one, Full of Life, gives um, that regeneration when you hit below 90% health, and because you have so much health, 90% actually is relatively high up there, so you can proc this uh, regen quite often since it's only got a 30 second cooldown. And finally, down at the very bottom, we have Gluttony. Increases life force gain from skills by 10%. And now 10% doesn't seem that much when it goes from 1% to 1.2%, but when every single hit, especially when you're hitting tons of mobs or big AoE attacks, the goal builds is up quickly. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Phoenix. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, so, so that's my traits. We've got all the stats. We've got all the solid stuff taken care of. Now the stuff that changes depending on situations. We've got our slot skills. Um, and as I say that, I almost never change my healing skill. I got this, I use the skill called consuming conditions uh, because it consumes conditions, literally all of them. Every single one that you get. So you get four, even five on yourself, it consumes them. But not only that, but you heal even more for it. So although it doesn't look like that much, only heals you for 5,000, 5,000 really isn't that much when you have 30,000 health. That extra 1,000 for every condition that's applied on you lets you choose the right timing for such a thing. If you, if you look over just to the right of it and there's that summon blood fiend, you're thinking, hey, why not have another pet? Why not do a little more damage, make more use of those traits? The problem with the pet is that if it dies, then you don't have a heal. And not having that option and, and pigeonholing yourself like that can get you into a lot of trouble. We're going to go further down here to the utility skills. We've got the summon bone minions, and the minion's pretty self-explanatory. You summon it, it, it attacks, right, Phoenix? Uh, Same thing with your, your sure. pets? Sure, I'm going to agree with you on this one. You know, I'm, I'm still like dissecting your, your flesh golem here. It looks pretty nasty. Sorry, <laughs> go on, go on. Dude, on high def, this guy looks really gross. He is pretty oh, fancy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> Yeah, so, so basically we want to maximize the use of, of our, our bone mini. You wait till it gets really low on health, and then bam, you blow it up, turn it into that giant poison field, plus do a ton of damage. Further down, we've got this dude here, which I'm going to summon just so Phoenix can stare at him. <laughs> oh, cool. There we dead. go. It looks kind of like his devourer. It's Sage in the afterlife. Yeah, there you go. It's a, it's a summon bone feed, and this one we're actually using for, for survivability. In this case, just like 
Phoenix's pet, it stays alive a long time because it shoots at range, does a little bit of crippling, and then if you use its ability, it immobilizes your opponent. Now, my most changed skill is this final one here, and right now I'm using the Well of Suffering. It sounds terrible, but it's actually really enjoyable to use. <laughs> this one applies vulnerability to your opponent for six seconds, and it pulses six times. So that means you get uh, two, four, six, two times six, 12 stacks of vulnerability on your Mathematics. opponent. Mathematics! Thank you very much. Yes, 12 stacks of vulnerability for six seconds, and that means you get about... 10 of those stacks because the last one's going to be fading as, as it goes through that time. Of course, your opponent has to stay within that, so it's more for immobile opponents. It's more for keeping someone not close to you because you can stand in there while, while you fight your opponent. I switch this one out often with Well of Corruption, and the reason for this is that it converts boons on foes into conditions. I do tons of condition damage, that makes sense, but a lot of the dredge bosses and a lot of different boss types put protection on themselves, put regeneration on themselves. You'll see when we get up to um, Hotwa, Har Har ah. Honor of the Waves. Honor yeah, of the Patrick, Waves. Don't worry. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, Honor of the Waves, uh, Path 1, the final boss there, he has four different types of boons he puts on himself. This ability, while I won't be using this character there, is very useful there because it rips them off and makes them a negative. Exactly. It's actually really helpful against Dredge, especially in Soros Embrace right now. I think we're running with your Necro. So oh, yeah, they're totally going to see that. Handy. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, yeah, you still got to do your Elite. And side note for your Elite, definitely something important to note. The Titan is awesome against stationary ty targets. Absolutely. Just awesome. It's so good against any stationary things Gold, put up into a corner tight. and buildings. I and, call them a and that's because not only does it do its one charge and its knockdown, but if it's against a building like that, it takes every single hit, every, every, every one, instead of charging through it. Yeah, he just he sits there just like mauling it. It's awesome. And I called him a Titan Flesh Golem. Correction, sorry. sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's like it's like our StarCraft stuff. We'll say Brood War and whatever. It happens. <laughs> uh, so, do you ever change yeah. up the Elite, though? I don't think I've ever seen you change up the Elite. The Flesh Golem is just very handy to have. It, it is very handy. The only time I make any significant changes to my build is if it's a huge AoE battle. Now, let's go over to here. I will change it to Plague Form if there's a huge amount of AoE, because then my pets are just dying a little bit too quickly, and what Plague Form does is, yeah, it kills all my pets, but you can apply blindness to enemies, hit everything, and lets your team, team really do the damage for you. Plus, it doubles your health, I think, so I'm up to, like, 45,000, 50,000 health then. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think that pretty much does it for your Necro. I think it's time we uh, show off your warrior. Yes, yes. Awesome. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please check back for more of uh, the host build videos we'll be releasing for you.